Hi, I'm Callie and welcome to Kapowski Reads and happy autumn to everybody who is as excited as I am about autumn. For me, autumn, the season starts the moment that I get that first sip of a pumpkin spice latte. I've not had that yet. I have an appointment so I'm going into town in a couple of moments and I'm gonna get my pumpkin spice latte shortly afterwards and then autumn will begin. Somebody needs to let the weather know because we're still still heat waves everywhere and I'm so ready for just autumn chills. I want to put the big duvet on. I want to wear cozy socks. I want to wear pajamas that aren't shorts. I'm I'm so ready. I am planning to just fully embrace my love of autumn in this vlog. I'm gonna be making soup. I'm gonna maybe do some baking. I'm a terrible baker. A good cook, a really good cook, really awful baker. I could blame our oven, but really it's just baking as a science. And I'm more of a mad professor that just chucks things in without measuring. So that's why I'm awful at baking. <laughs> I measure with my heart instead of the scale. <laughs> I'm gonna do some crafting. I've got loads of crafts that I've just been putting aside for autumn. And I've got a whole bunch of autumnal books that I really want to make a start on too. For me, my reading, I was gonna say my reading really changes in autumn, but I think I'm talking nonsense because I pretty much read that way all year round. But autumn to me is reading cozy, cozy books, mysteries, anything kind of paranormal. I know that like horror is more traditionally October but I kind of think of all of autumn as being spooky and cosy season. With thrillers usually I put them aside for November. There's something about November that means thriller but I'm going to be focusing on cosy books, maybe some paranormal, and I am starting with Hex and the City by Kate Johnson. We've got Poppy who is a witch and she's got this amazing hair, kind of like Rapunzel entangled. And that hair seems to have a mind of its own. She is a witch who's a little bit unlucky, very unlucky. And chaos seems to just follow her. And she ends up meeting Alex who's hunky. He's an actor illusionist. Mainly he dresses up as a shirtless viking and does like light shows and the ladies swoon and I could imagine definitely that show would go really well. They do great. So they end up working together when she accidentally sells him a cursed pendant. So she has to go and find him, retrieve this pendant and you would think that that would be the story ending but not so because chaos ensues and I am so excited about this. I got this book on NetGalley months ago and I went, no, I'm putting it aside. Why did I ask for it so early? But I, I knew I just really wanted to read this and it will come out before this vlog comes up, but I will have finished it before it comes out. That's, that's what's going to happen. I'm so excited about this book. I have read one book by Kate Johnson before. I read it last year and it was Hex Appeal and it had a really similar cover too which made me a little confused thinking they were part of a series but they're not. But I I loved I loved the last book I read by this author and I gave it four stars. So I've got, I mean I hate going into books with high expectations but I always do go in with high expectations. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, but now I have to go and go into town, go to my appointment, get my pumpkin spice latte and go and get ingredients for soup because when I tell you, my friends and I are super cool, uh, you will not believe me because we're not. Um, <laughs> my lovely friend Sam introduced me to a thing many years ago called soup timber where basically we just eat soup at some point every day in September. And since then it's kind of grown arms and legs and we get really excited about having soup and <laughs> sharing our soup recipes. It's ridiculous, it's so silly, but it's just something that makes us really happy and like, you know, it's a fun thing to do with friends. So with today being the 1st of September, it's the 1st of soup-tember as well. So I'm off to get some ingredients to make a soup. 
I got a recipe for a sweet corn chowder, which frankly sounds just delicious. I feel like more soup should have potatoes in them. So that's the exciting life I lead. And someone started drilling outside, so I'm gonna go. I'll recap soon. <laughs> I can't cut bread, clearly. <laughs> I have had my pumpkin spice latte, my first pumpkin spice latte that somebody else has made for me of 2023. So I think that I can declare that for me, autumn has begun and I'm so happy. I have my autumnal cardigan, which is currently being used as a throw because it's too hot. <laughs> too hot for the cardigan. I can confirm that pumpkin spice lattes are just as sickly sweet as I remember them being. I didn't actually get to taste them last year because I lost my sense of taste and smell for about six months and that was conveniently over. The best tasting months of the year it came back just in time for Christmas but Oh, I was miserable. So I didn't get to have the sort of spicy, sweet goodness of the pumpkin spice last year. So very glad to be able to taste it this year. My friend has actually sent me a recipe to make my own pumpkin spice syrup. So I'm going to try that at some point later this month and maybe take some of the sugar out so that it's just, oh, condensed spiciness. I also managed to get all of the ingredients for my soup. And I had to go to Marks and Spencers for everything because it was really hard to find a supermarket that had everything that I needed in one place. And surprisingly, it was kind of cheaper to buy it there. And I always think of Marks and Spencers as the really expensive supermarket. But I suppose if you're wanting corn, it, it wasn't overly expensive. And I did make absolutely loads of soup. I've got at least Oh, at least a week's worth of lunches from my soup. And it's got potatoes, corn, fennel, onion, leek, and uh, red peppers. It was meant to have tomatoes, but I didn't want tomatoes in my soup. So red peppers. And I made my own stock, my own stock from corn. And I basically feel like a proper chef, as if I should be getting a call from Netflix at some point offering me a show where I, I make soup or something. I don't know. That would be a pretty boring show, but you know, hit me up, Netflix. I would, I would agree. I also have made some great progress in my book. It feels like such a quick read because I, I'm now halfway through the book and I'm loving it. I'm having such a great time with it. I'm loving our two main characters. We have Poppy and Alex. Alex is this hunky heartthrob who plays a viking illusionist on stage but he's actually underneath all of that he's a nice guy. He's just kind of hiding it under bravado. He's got some insecurities that I think we're maybe gonna find out more about so I'm looking forward to that. I'm loving Poppy. She is not a pushover even though she seems like it. I am loving when she stands up for herself. Her hair is so her hair is a character all of its own. It's got its own personality. She has some family issues too, and I'm kind of hoping that she stands up for herself with her family, even though that can be so hard to do. I just, I really want that for her. The Cursed Pendant has just led them on this adventure. They thought that they had dealt with the Cursed Pendant, then they found a mummy, and now they found a sort of haunted ship, and that's where I have stopped so far because I had things to do. So I'm really excited to see where the book is going to go next. And it is a little bit spicy. I don't remember knowing that it was going to be spicy. I mean, I'm not mad about it. It's, you know, it is what it is. It's fun though. It's a really fun book and it's got some really, like I would say quite believable romance. I'm, I'm buying that these two characters are attracted to each other. I, I see it. I'm rooting for them. I, oh, I've got the fear that there's maybe going to be something that's going to come out and maybe tear them apart. But I am hoping, I'm hoping for the best for them. I've got a hopeful heart. 
and I'm so excited to see what happens next. I am planning to have a cozy night tonight. I have heard that Netflix has got the two Goosebump films on it. So I am going to watch at least one of them tonight. I love Goosebumps, even though they terrified me as a kid. I haven't seen any of the films, so I'm, I'm really excited. And I feel like Jack Black, he's in both of them, I think. And I feel like he's just a really nice guy. I know nothing of him other than I think he's a nice guy and I don't wanna hear otherwise because I'd, I'd be so sad. <laughs> So slight change of plan, I changed the book that I was reading today because we are off to the theatre, that's why I'm wearing actual clothes, like jewellery is involved. We are going to go and see Mina's Reckoning, which is a Dracula inspired story and I wanted to get myself ready to be in the mood for a vampiric tale. So I started reading Slay, which is by multiple over 20 different authors and it is a collection, an anthology of short stories that are based on vampires and they are, I'm halfway through so far right now and I am loving it. I will give more details on the book and the play later, but for now I have to get ready to go out. We are going off to eat first and I am getting calamari and I am excited. The play last night was just absolutely spectacular. I bought the tickets so long ago that I didn't really remember too much about it other than it being inspired by Dracula. So I forgot that it was actually set in Scotland and it had some Scots language, which was so fun to see uh, coming from the stage. And it had an all female and non-binary cast as well. And I just thought it was, it was so good. And the lighting set all, also amazing in addition to it all being from Mina's point of view and I just I thought it was amazing and my boyfriend really enjoyed it too so I've got a bunch of friends that are going to go and see it when it comes to their cities so that's really good I'm so glad that people I know are going to go and see something that I've also enjoyed it felt like a really good start to the autumnal season to go and see a seasonally appropriate play because if you can't enjoy a gothic tale in autumn, what, when can you? The food before the show was also just delicious. I'd never been to the theatre restaurant before, so that was a new experience for me. And I mean, I, I would go back. It was really, it was really nice. I did get my calamari, which made me very happy. That's one of my favourite things to order when I'm out because absolutely no way am I attempting to make calamari when I'm at home. No, no. I will get somebody who knows what they're doing to make it because if I try I will end up with rubber or it won't be nice. I don't I don't anticipate my skills being that good. We didn't get home until pretty late last night so both of us very tired today so just a really chilled and relaxed day at home with my book. After the play yesterday I just knew I wanted to finish, this is such a nice floppy book, uh, I really wanted to finish my vampire stories rather than going back to X and the City, which I will go back to. I really want to finish that, but I wanted to finish this even more. So I did. Just, I wanted the vampires. So this is a collection, an anthology of vampiric stories. There were 28 stories by authors that I hadn't read from before, but I'm gonna read from them in the future because this was a really strong collection. There were no, I didn't find there to be any like weak links or stories that I didn't enjoy like greatly less than the others. The lowest rating I gave to any of the stories because the only way that I can think of to rate an anthology or a short story collection is to rate every story separately. And the majority of the stories I actually gave around about four stars too. So the overall collection, I'm given four stars. It deserves four stars, maybe like a 4.25. I've really had a great time with this. And the stories all come from different sort of vampiric points of view, if you will. 
There are stories from the vampire's point of view, stories from vampire hunters or victims. So I really enjoyed that. And I really liked that it wasn't Eurocentric. There were some vampiric lore that I, I didn't know because the majority of the vampire stories I know are from European lore. And it was just really interesting having some new perspectives and some new, just new stories. Something that I hadn't read before. I really enjoyed the variety of genres as well. There were a lot of more contemporary stories, but loads of historical and some sci-fi as well. And I didn't know that I wanted to read loads of sci-fi vampire stories, but it turns out I do after reading this collection. That is something I want to look more into. My personal favourite story was Unflamed by Penelope Flynn. And I am going to be looking up Penelope Flynn because I want to read more of what they've done. I really, this was, that was my favourite story. That was about a third of the way into the book. And oh, it was really hard picking a favourite. I didn't need to, but I decided I was going to. <laughs> Today it was 26 degrees. So I don't think anybody has told the weather that it's autumn. So I think, I don't know, I thought that by bringing out cinnamon that the weather would realise it was autumn, um, but it's not. I'm <laughs> so warm. My bedroom, I'm filming in my bedroom just now, is 30 degrees and I, I feel disgusting and just so sweaty. It's deeply unpleasant so really if the weather could catch up and just I mean cut those degrees into a third I want 10 degrees that's that's what that's what my heart wants I really want to wear knitwear I really want to I really want to wear knitwear I've got I've got some hand knit socks that I'm just looking longingly at I made them for autumn and I just I went to put them on this morning and I had them in my hands and was like no I will I will just boil I will boil my little hooves so they they will have to wait for the cooler weather but I'm gonna go back and well no I'm gonna go make dinner because it's quite late now and we haven't had dinner so I'm gonna deal with that and then the next book that I'm gonna be chatting about should be X and the City I really want to finish that in this vlog and maybe do another few fun autumnal activities Good morning! I woke up to a chill in the air. I'm feeling, um, oh, oh is the weather teasing me because it's supposed to get really warm today but there's a chill. I woke up cold. Oh, I cannot tell you how delighted, delighted I was to wake up feeling a little, ooh, burr, cold. It's all, all I've been dreaming of. My plan for today, I have great plans. I plan to finish reading Hex and the City. I'm so excited about reading it. I have really enjoyed, I really enjoyed Slay, my first completed book of this vlog and I am confident that Hex in the City is gonna be just as excellent and then I will call this a success. <laughs> I also have to go for a walk, like I don't have to have to go for a walk but I've not been well so it makes sense to get some fresh air and you know because I've been quite exhausted it makes sense to try and do some, you know, little walks, get myself back, back to full strength. So I'm going to go for a wee walk before it gets super sunny. So yeah, let's go for a walk, read a book. That sounds like an excellent way to spend a day. went for my walk. I've, I've achieved so much today. I went for my walk and I decided I was going to walk to the Little Free Library because there's one near the university so I go there every so often in the hope of finding a gem. I have yet to find one but today was the first time that I went and I found other books. I found books that I hadn't left so it's nice knowing other people are using it too but no gem for me.
but I did leave two books for somebody else to enjoy. So it was nice to get outside, get some fresh air. The weather's still, oh, toasty. I got home and I read some of my book and then I watched a seasonally appropriate film. I watched Goosebumps 2, which I loved. I watched Goosebumps 1 recently, so it was nice watching the second one. I hadn't seen this before either. And it was so fun. I really want to reread Goosebumps now. It's been so long, but there are so many books. That I think what I'm going to probably do is just watch the lovely Gavin talk about Goosebumps instead, rather than revisit them because I don't think I have them all. I know I've got a few, my mum's found a few of my old copies, but there were more point horror books than Goosebumps. So I maybe don't have as many copies as I thought I did. So let's just watch the lovely Gavin talk about Goosebumps instead and I'll get that little bit of nostalgia. I have now finished reading Hex in the City and I really enjoyed this book. I had such a great time with it. I ended up giving this four stars as well. And yeah, such, such a fun read. I really enjoyed the characters, both Poppy and Alex, where they were multifaceted and I liked that they sort of brought the best out in each other. I really loved how much Poppy just grew in confidence and I loved that Alex let himself show vulnerability. They were a little bit sort of insta-love, but I totally bought it. I bought that there was tension between those two. I, I really enjoyed their romance. I enjoyed them actually working together to, you know, save the day. Poppy's hair was still, hands down, my favourite character. I loved that her, her hair just had its own personality. <laughs> I loved it to sort of hit people out the way. It was just, yeah, fun hair that couldn't be tamed. I loved the coven. They were, a lot of them, the majority really were older women. And I just love the way that they were like, I have other things I need to be doing. Can we just wrap this up? Can we speed things up? I thought it was so fun. It's all kind of like, almost like realistic for people who are, you know, busy little bees that they're like, I want to go and do stuff. I need an early night. Can we just, you know, get the ball rolling and get to the action? I really, really enjoyed that. It was really fast paced and just really like heartwarming, but also like a little bit smarty. And I I didn't expect the smut. I think that this author is possibly my new go-to when I want a fun witchy read because this is the second book of hers I've read and I've enjoyed it just as much. Really good time. I laughed, I cried, I did dramatic readings of the smutty scenes as as I will do whenever I read a book that has smut. I will, I will do like a Shakespearean <laughs> reading of it to my partner um, and then we'll chuckle. <laughs> it's been such a fun few days. I read two fantastic books, one being a little witchy romance and one being a collection of amazing vampire stories, an anthology and I've had such a great time, such a really good reading last couple of days. Heartily recommend both of my books to you. And I'd love to know any of your favourite autumnal reads. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I've had a really good time making this, so I hope you've had a good time watching it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>